All right, happy Wednesday to you. Thank the Lord has brought us to another day. Just thank you for His grace and His goodness. We'll be having Bible study here in just a moment, but she's picked out a beautiful song in the sweet by and by. Thank God we have this blessed promise. <clears throat> Sure, what a day that's going to be to be with our loved ones and those gone on before to see that blessed place that He's prepared for us. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and be turning with us to the uh, Romans chapter 5. We want to talk about here in just a moment about an abundance of grace. We have been given as God's children an abundance of grace, not just a little grace but an abundance of grace, and I am so thankful. I don't deserve it, not worthy of it, not worthy of one drop of his precious blood, but he shed it there on Calvary for you and me, and we're going to talk about that here in just a moment. I want to go, Lord, in prayer. <clears throat> we know there's many needs, those that are sick, been going through circumstances and situation. God knows your need. <clears throat> I see some that's already had his prayer request up. And God knows about them, and God's able. There's nothing that my God can't do. He's concerned, and he cares about your needs and when we take our needs to him and we pray he hears us and he answers our prayers what a wonderful wonderful god we serve so let's pray one for another let's remember all the churches across the land that god will touch them and bless them the ministers that god will revive the churches again and god will give the ministers the words that people need to hear and that souls will come in to find him as lord and as savior let's uh, pray for the missionaries across the land. Let's pray for the Gideon Ministries, also Samaritan's Purse Ministries, all the different ministries uh, that God will just use these in a very special way. Satan is fighting in this last day as never before, but I know that I serve a God that is able. There is nothing impossible with my God. So let's just join together. Let's pray one for another. God will strengthen our brothers and our sisters. So many people, <clears throat> I mentioned Sunday, uh, have anxiety and fear. It is just rampant in this last day because of the things that is coming up on the face of the earth. Yes, we, we'll remember you and everybody. We're going to pray one for another. And so let's let's just remember all these things. My God is able. There is nothing that my God can't do. And I know that he's able. So let's trust in him and let's put our faith in him and him alone. Father, I thank you for your love and your goodness. I thank you for the touch of your spirit. For your presence, what a wonderful and a mighty and a holy and a righteous God we serve. Lord, most of all, I thank you for that you sent your son, Christ Jesus, to pay the penalty for my sins. Lord, nailing them to his cross, 
and thereby bringing salvation to me, Lord, and making me a part of the family of God, as unworthy as I am. Yet you love me and gave yourself for me. I thank you for that. Now, God, you know every need, every burden, every care. Lord, those that have special needs, special concerns, those that are sick, Lord, those that need that touch from God, those that depression and anxiety is just eating them up, Lord, in this last day. Help them, God, to look unto Jesus and allow the peace of Jesus, Lord, to be in their hearts and to be in their lives. And Father, we just pray your grace and your goodness upon your people across this land. I ask God that you'll touch the ministers across this land. I pray that the Holy Ghost fire will fill them, Lord, as they step in their poor pits to preach and to minister the word of God. Let us lift up Jesus Christ, Lord, and if you be lifted up, all men will be drawn unto you. I pray for the loss across this land, God, that their heart will be stirred, that they'll be moved in this last day, that they'll see Christ Jesus as the only answer for the things that we face, Lord. And Lord, I thank you for all that you've done, all you're going to do, all you're going to accomplish. I praise you and I thank you for it, all the different ministries across the land. Lord, I just ask that you touch them and use us in this last day for your praise, for your honor, and for your glory. Help the church to arise and be the church, God, that you've called us to be. Touch our brothers and our sisters, Lord. Encourage their hearts, Lord. Lift them up right now. That one that's downhearted, that one that's discouraged, God. I pray the Holy Ghost of God would reach down and would just uplift them and encourage them. Let them know, God, that you've got this. Let them know, Lord, that you're making ways where there seem to be no ways and that your hand will never leave them and never forsake them. And I thank you and I praise you, Lord. And we're waiting. We're longing for that sweet by and by. What a day that's going to be. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We just love you so much. Romans chapter 5, verse 17. We've got several verses we're going to look at tonight. I'll try not to linger long on any of them. We're going to try to go all the way to chapter 8. And uh, there's some powerful, powerful, powerful words in these verses tonight. No way we could bring it all out. There's just no way. But Romans chapter 5 and verse 17 is where we want to begin. <clears throat> If by one man's offense, death reigned by one. Now, we preached about that Sunday, about the curse and how the curse came upon the earth, that through Adam and Eve, that sin passed upon all men because they uh, allowed sin to come into their hearts and they allowed lust to be conceived in their lives. And because uh, of them, sin then reigned upon all men and death came upon man. So here he says, for if by one man's offense, Adam, Death reigned by one, much more. I like the much mores in the word of God. Much more. They which receive, and I want you to listen to these words. This is what we're going to be talking about tonight. They which receive, not pay for, not work for, not earn, not accomplish, but they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. I want to talk about an abundance of grace. I'm gl Glory be to God. I'm so thankful that he has an abundance of grace. His grace is not slack. You know, there's a lot of things that we're running out of anymore. It seems like you, you go to the grocery store today. I, I was in there today and I seen a lady had a buggy just full of toaster strudels. I mean, it was full. I don't know how many boxes. And she said, I've not been able to find them anywhere Everybody's been out of them, and I can't get my kids out of bed without these toaster strudels, and I'm going to make sure I got them. Well, I want you to know that there is an abundance. It will never run out. God's grace is sufficient. God's grace is there. It'll be for you today. If time stands, it'll be there for you tomorrow. There is an abundance. It will never run out, an abundance of his grace. So as death came by one man, and as sin reigned by one man, so the abundance of grace has come unto us, and that gift of righteousness, his righteousness, not self-righteousness, not our righteousness, not works of righteousness, but his righteousness, in that he has made us a part of the family of God. And when Jesus, when God looks down and he sees us, and you've heard me say this so many times, when God looks down and he sees me, and he sees you. He does not see us in all of our faults and our failures. Those who by faith have received Christ Jesus and have believed in the finished work of the cross of Calvary, when he looks at us, he sees the blood of his dear son, Christ Jesus, and he sees us as righteous. Glory be 
to his name. So that righteousness shall reign in life by one Christ Jesus. There's no greater life. There's, there's no greater way to live than being a child of God. I said Sunday, the world thinks that they really know how to party and they think they really know how to enjoy life. But they don't know what life's about if they don't know Christ. They don't know what goodness is about if they've not received Jesus in their heart and in their life because he is life and life more abundantly. There I go. I've done got hung up on one verse. Let me go on. Verse 18. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, Christ Jesus, not your righteousness, it's worthless, but the righteousness of one, the free gift, remember that, the free gift, came upon all men unto justification of life. Justification, that I stand before God by faith in Christ in the finished work of his cross, that I stand before God justified just as if I had never sinned. I stand justified in his presence. Glory be to God. That justification of life. Verse 19. For as by one man's disobedience, speaking of Adam again, many were made sinners. So by the obedience, obedience of one, shall many be made righteous, speaking of Christ. Verse 20, Moreover the law entered, that the offense might abound. Now listen, But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin have reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. He says where sin abounded. If we have ever, ever, ever lived in a world where sin abounded, we live in that world today. I hear of wickedness that I thought I would never have even began to have heard of. In our country, not some far off land, but here, home, in our territory. We hear of things going on that just baffles the mind. And when you think you have heard it all, just hold on because you've not heard nothing yet. Wickedness in high places, such sin, such filthiness, such ungodliness, things that, that are beyond our imagination that, that we can't even think about. Uh, we see this abounding in this day, sin abounding. How then... How then can I live a godly life? How then can I keep my focus upon Christ? How then with all these things going on, because where sin did, did abound, where sin has abounded, grace has much more abounded. When God brings you to it, his grace will take you through it. Don't ever forget that. If God allows you to come to this situation, come to this circumstance, come to this whatever is going on in this world, His grace will be sufficient. He will provide it. Brother Doug, you don't understand what I'm going through. You don't understand what I'm in. You don't understand the circumstances or the situation. No, I don't, but God does. And I know I serve a God that is able, that is nothing takes Him by surprise. He already knows what is taking place. He already knows what is happening. And I can tell you that where sin abounds and it comes against you, grace doth much more abound. You can depend on it. His grace will be sufficient and his grace will be there for you. But I've seen people go through circumstances and situations in our church. I've been there going on now 38 years and I've seen these things take place and I've seen situations come to people and I thought, I don't understand. I don't know how they'll ever make it through it. But I've seen his grace, oh hallelujah, undergird them and strengthen them and lift them up. Take them through trials that they never thought or I never thought they could go through. But the hand of Almighty God made ways day by day and moment by moment. His grace was sufficient. So where sin abounds, you can count and depend that there will be an abundance of grace. Verse 21, I've got to hurry. That is sin have reigned unto death. Sin brings death. Sin brings death. 
God created all things. We spoke about this Sunday. I'll just briefly mention it again. God created all things good, all things pure, all things holy, all things righteous. Man, it was a perfect, wonderful world, but then sin entered in. And when sin entered in, then death came by sin. So that sin has reigned unto death. Sin will bring death. Don't let, don't play with sin. Don't fool around with sin. It will bring death in your life. Be very careful. Be very careful about playing with sin. It will bring death to your life. It will bring death in your family. It will bring separation uh, to you. Death, sin will bring death. Now listen, that as death have reigned, as sin have reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Did you hear what he said? Grace, so might grace reign through righteousness into, into eternal life by Jesus Christ. And we're going to talk about this a little further on over here in chapter 6. But let me tell you, grace needs to reign in your life and in my life. What is setting on the throne of your heart? Grace should be reigning in your life. Well, let's go down to verse to chapter 6, okay? Verse 1. What shall we say then? Now listen to these words. Uh, this will put a lot of people that believe certain things, this will stop what, what they think. Listen what this says. This is God's Word. This ain't what I think. This ain't what somebody else thinks. This is God's Word. Romans chapter 6 and verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound. There is a new doctrine going around. It's, it's been around for a little while. You've probably heard of it. I'm not sure. It's called the grace doctrine. And I'm telling you, grace is wonderful. Grace is great. But you see, Satan comes around just like he did in the Garden of Eden. I told you about it, how it tells half lies and half truths. And it's called the grace revolution. And they just preach, you know, you don't even mention sin. You, you never talk about sin. You never mention about things being sin. Uh, you just go live and do anything and act any way you want. And God's grace will take care of it. There's a problem with that. This ain't what God's word says. Amen. I want to go by God's word, not what people say, not what people think. Here Paul says, anointed by the Holy Ghost of God, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? There's an abundance of grace. So let's just go ahead and live in sin, continue in sin, uh, go all about sin. Uh, but that is not God's way. Grace is there to sustain us and to keep us because sin will bring death. Walking in sin, living in continuously in sin, and following the things of this world will bring death. Now, this ain't popular preaching. People don't want to hear this. They want to hear they can do any way, act any way, uh, do their own thing, so to speak. And everything's going to be all right. We're going to talk about that here in just a moment. He said here, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Listen, verse 2, God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? How can we live in sin and enjoy the pleasures of sin? How can a true child of God, I'm not talking about failing and falter, I'm talking about continuously living in a life of open rebellion and open sin against God. There's a problem. There's a problem with that. He said, God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Verse 3, now listen. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Verse 4. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. Listen to this, so very important. That like as Christ was raised up. Now, if this Sunday is the only Sunday that you celebrate celebrate Resurrection Sunday, there's a prompt. Every day of our lives, we need to celebrate the risen Savior. He is alive, glory be to God, and he lives forevermore. He is alive and he lives forevermore. So he says that like as Christ was raised up, there's no doubt. Christ was raised up. There's so many infallible 
proofs of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. One of the main infallible proofs of the resurrection of Jesus Christ is that he lives in my heart and my life. Oh my, you, you, can, you can come to me and tell me all kinds of things you want to tell me, but I know, I know, I know, I know he lives. How do you know he lives? Because he lives within my heart. So that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father. Now listen, even so we also should walk in newness of life. In newness of life. We are a new creature. The old has passed and the new. Glory be to God. We are a new creature, newness of life. Now listen, verse 5, I've got to hurry. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. The old man is dead and the new man in Christ Jesus is alive. Listen, verse 6. Knowing this, here, here you go. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. My, I've got to read that again. The last part of verse 6, that the body of sin might be destroyed. Look in your Bible, it's sad. That henceforth we should not not serve sin. What is the problem of so many families today? What is the problem in so many lives today? What is the problem in so many homes today? What is the problem in our own lives is that we catch ourselves being servants to sin. God help us. Come on. Grace is there for us, but we don't accept that grace. We don't walk in that grace. We don't walk in that newness of life. We allow the lust of the flesh and the desires of the eyes to draw us away from the things of God. That's why we need to be in the house of God when we can. That's why we need to be around Christian brothers that will lift us up and encourage one another and pray for one another, that we might keep our focus upon Christ Jesus, not upon one another, but upon Christ Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Now, verse 7, for he that is dead is free from sin. Verse 8, now if we be dead with Christ, this is a very powerful, powerful verse. You need to hear this. You need to listen to what he's, what he's saying here. Verse 8. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we're dead with Christ in the sin. We believe that we shall also live with him. Believe. That is one of the greatest things that will happen in our lives is when we truly believe. The greatest sin in the church, the thing that is turning hearts cold, come on, drawing us away from God and the things of God, is unbelief. Unbelief. We don't take God, you heard me, we, we don't take God at his word, that what he said he will do. I have seen him time and time and time and time again. I know my God will see what he will do, what he said he will. So verse eight, listen, powerful, need to mark it. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Glory be to God. You see, I know in the morning, I know when I lay my head down tonight, I'm with Christ. If I don't wake up, my, 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 don't weep for me. Don't cry. Don't sing no sad songs. Mary Jane, me, we both already know not to sing no sad songs at our funerals. Uh, my rejoice, be happy, because I'm where I want to be. I'm where I long to be with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We shall live with him. If I do wake up in the morning, then he's going to be with me. I'm going to step out in his grace. And, and by his grace and his goodness, I'm going to walk in it. Oh, yeah, I'm going to face situations, circumstances. I'm going to get discouraged. I'm going to get despondent. 
I, I'm going to get upset. But his grace, his grace always pulls me back. That spirit, we're going to talk about that in a moment. That law of the spirit works in my heart and my life, begins to get my attention, begins to get my focus refocused. His grace. We believe that we shall also live with him. This is living in Christ Jesus. Verse 9. Knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. He is victorious over death, hell, and the grave. He has won the victory for me and you. Verse 10. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Verse 11. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, <clears throat> but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now you need to hear this next verse. All these verses is powerful. Uh, th that verse I just read is so powerful, but if I get digging into it, we won't get done. Alive unto God. Man, that is a sermon in itself. Our lives need to be unto God. Verse 12. Let not sin. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that she should obey it and the lust thereof. Don't let it reign. That's why, and you hear me say it, I believe I said it Sunday, there's places you ought not go, there's things you ought not do, there's things you ought not listen to, there's things you ought not look at, there's things you ought not let, let, let come in these eyes. Come on. Let not Sin <clears throat> reign in your mortal body. Watch what is coming in. Watch what is setting on the throne of your heart. Verse 13, very important. Very important. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. Don't yield yourselves to sin. Don't yield your members to sin. Well, how do, I, how do I not do that? But yield yourselves unto God. We are his servants. We are his children. As those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Now I want you to catch this next verse, verse 14. For sin shall not. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. The law was not done away with. It was fulfilled in Christ Jesus. And the law was impossible for men to keep. It was written upon tablets of stone. But now his law, the law of the Spirit, we're going to talk about that in Romans 8 here in a moment. The law of the Spirit is now written in our hearts and in our lives. We are under His grace, His goodness. He will lead us. He will guide us. He will direct us. Verse 15. What then shall we, what then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? God forbid. He tells us again. God forbid. Verse 16, know ye not that to whom, and this is so important, here's this word yield again, know ye not to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey his servants ye are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. When we yield ourselves to sin, we yield ourselves to death. We yield our instruments to death. But when we yield ourselves to Christ and to his grace, he will sustain us and he will keep us and bring us life. Verse 17. But God be thanked that ye were, that ye were the servants of sin. But you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered unto you. Verse 18. Here he goes again. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the matter of man in verse 19 because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanliness and to iniquity unto iniquity, 
Even so, now yield your members, servants to righteousness unto holiness. We need to yield ourselves to God. Do we yield our ears, our eyes, our hands, and our mouth? Uh-oh. <laughs> Hit me hard, too. Do we yield those things to God as his servant? as his instruments. If we're walking in grace and we're walking in his righteousness, we will yield our members to him. Verse 20. For when you were the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. When you walked in sin, you walked away from Christ. You did not believe in Christ. You did not had not received his grace. You did not believe in the things of God. You walked in sin and unrighteousness and you were free from righteousness. Verse 21. What fruit had you then in those things whereof you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. Sin brings death. Now listen to these beautiful next two verses. Verse 22. You, most of you could probably quote them, I'm sure. But now being made free from sin. Free from sin. He has came into the slave market and he has purchased me, bought me up out of the slave market. When you read in Corinthians about being bought with a price, the precious blood of Jesus Christ, which he shed for us on the cross of Calvary. And we by faith believe in that. In essence, what he done, those words let us know, he came into the slave, slave market and he bought us up out of the slave market. We have a picture a lot of times like we're still on the auction block, but I'm not on the auction block anymore. I'm not for sale. Glory be to God. I'm not for sale anymore. I am God's child. I am his servant. I am his and he is mine. So being made now free from sin and become servants to God, you have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. Glory to God. Everlasting lasting life. We sung about that here just a moment ago in the sweet by and by. What a day, what a time. Oh my, how wonderful, how wonderful that's going to be. How wonderful. For the wages of sin is death. Sin will bring death. I've seen it time and time and time again. I've told people I've preached and I've seen and I've prayed and I've seen people going down that path, walking away from the things of God, walking away from God's direction, walking away from God's leading. And I've seen sin bring death in their lives, bring death in their families, bring destruction, bring turmoil, bring heartache because they were walking in sin away from God. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God, glory be to God, is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. By faith in him, believing in him and walking in him, the gift of God is eternal life. Now skip over with some wonderful, powerful words in chapter 7. We just don't have any time to get into that. I, I've got to get to chapter 8, verses 1 and 2. Our church hears these verses a lot, or we're going to read several verses, but we're first going to read verse 1 and 2. Our church hears these verses a lot, but these are very, very important verses. Romans chapter 8. There is therefore no, now, there is therefore now, now that we come to live in Christ, now that we're believing in him, now that we are trusting in the cross, and the finished work of Christ upon his cross to purchase our salvation. And we by faith have believed in that and have received the forgiveness of our sins by faith. Now, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Don't let the devil bring condemnation. Now, there is a difference, and you know the difference. There is a difference between conviction and condemnation. Satan will bring condemnation. Satan will try to tire you down and say, well, just who do you think you are? And just what do you think you're doing? You think God's going to listen to you? Look at you. Who, who are you to ask God to bless in your life? Who are you to ask God to, to work or do this? That's condemnation. Conviction is that work of the Spirit in our heart and our life that says, hey, you ought not be going this way. 
Hey, hey, you need to come back. You need to get closer to me. Hey, don't, don't, don't be going to the left or to the right. That's that convicting power. That's love. Oh, what love. Glory. That's grace in action. Okay? So there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Are in Christ Jesus. Now let me stop. And I, I'm no judge. Don't, don't claim to be. But uh, there are those who have a profession without a possession. They have said they believe in Christ. They might have even signed a card or shook a preacher's hand. They might have even joined the church. But there is a difference between a profession of faith and a possession of faith. When you truly believe in Christ Jesus as the Lord and Savior, and that he went to the cross to die for my sins and your sins, Paid that penalty, paid that price, a price I could not pay. He, I owed a debt I could not pay. He paid a debt he did not owe. When you truly, truly believe and you receive him, there is a difference in your life. Christ walks in your heart and in your life. Being in Christ Jesus. Now listen, let me finish this. Glory be to God. Ain't that so wonderful? Glory, hallelujah. Who walk? Let me finish this verse. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. They're not walking in the flesh. They're walking in the Spirit. Now, how do we do that? Listen to verse 2. This is such an important verse. For the law of the Spirit, not, not the law written on tablets of stone, the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus have made me free from the law of sin and death. You see, the Holy Ghost of God, when I believe in Christ and I receive him as my Lord and Savior, and I truly believe in him as the Son of God, sitting at the right hand of the Father as my intercessor, no doubt, believe him and receive that forgiveness. When that takes place, <clears throat> the Spirit then has every right, and he will and he does, to come in my heart and my life to lead me day by day and moment by moment. He will direct me. He will lead me. He will show me things. And his hand will be there to help me have victory. How else can I have victory? There is no way but the Spirit working in me. How can I overcome these things, these, these temptations? How, how can I overcome these things that come my way? Only by the law of the Spirit working in your life. Only by you allowing him. He's a gentleman. He won't force his way. He won't make you serve him. He's a gentleman, but he'll come in with that gentle plea. He'll come in with that Spirit of God, and that law of God will be written in your heart. And you'll know. You know right from wrong. You know what direction to go into. But then you've got to yield that goes back to what we talked about a while ago. You understand what I'm saying? You've got to yield yourselves unto him. And when you do, you'll have victory. When you do, you can conquer those things. Oh, Brother Doug, I'll never be able to. That's just the way I am. Well, the way you am is wrong. And he wants to change the way we are. He wants to change the way we are. He wants to make us a new creature in Christ Jesus. But we've got to allow him to. We've got to yield ourselves to him. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Read this many times over in the next coming week. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus have made me free from the law of sin and death. Verse 3. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sent in his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. Christ hung on the cross. He paid that price for my sins. I couldn't pay it. You couldn't pay it because we had sin already in us. But he was righteous without sin. And he hung upon the cross and thereby paid the penalty of God's righteousness. That the righteousness of the law, verse 4, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh. Let me read that again. Who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit, yielding ourselves unto the Spirit. Verse 5, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. Go down with me to verse 11. We're going to close. We've got two more verses we want to look at. I want you to hear this is so powerful. This is so, so powerful. 
verse 11, but if the spirit of him, talking about that law of the spirit working in our lives, the Holy Ghost, but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, the same spirit that raised Christ, glory, that brought him forth victorious over death, hell, and the grave, that same spirit works in you. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. That, oh, the songwriter wrote a beautiful song, that same spirit, that same spirit indwells in your heart, indwells in your life, and that same spirit is able. Brother Doug, I can't, no, you can't, but the spirit of God will. If you'll yield yourself to him, if you'll allow him to, if you'll put self out of the way, if you'll quit trying to pull yourself up by your bootstraps, you'll quit trying to strengthen yourself, and you allow the Spirit of God to quicken your mortal body. Glory be to God. That same Spirit that raised Christ up will quicken you and will bring you victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. Glory, I feel his presence. Verse 14. Thank you, Jesus. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For as many that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Are we following him? Are we allowing the law of the Spirit to work in our hearts and in our lives? If you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ today as your Lord and Savior, there's no greater time than right now to fully believe He is risen. Many infallible proofs. He is alive and He lives forevermore. And He has the answer to whatever problem you face or whatever dilemmas in your life. He has the answer. If you'll truly believe in Him and trust in Him right now. Believe in the finished work of the cross for the forgiveness of your sins. Ask Him to cleanse you, to wash you, to forgive you. Proclaim to him that you believe in what he there done upon the cross and that he's purchased your salvation and you receive that today. And if you're not walking close to him, if you're walking away from him, you're not allowing the spirit of Christ, that Holy Ghost, that spirit that raised him from the dead to daily lead you and guide you and help you walk in victory. Let's right now ask him to do that. Father, Lord, there be any today who's listening that does not know you as Lord and Savior, I pray, God, at this moment, let them now receive you. Let them now believe by faith. Let them say it's not of works of righteousness, but by faith in the finished work of the cross and what you there done. Help them to receive that forgiveness of their sins and help them to open their hearts and their minds and their lives up so the law of the Spirit will begin to work. And Lord, I pray those who are walking afar off. Those who are not allowing the law of the Spirit to daily lead them and guide them and direct them and show them the way. Lord, I pray that you stir their heart right now. Help them to see, Lord, they can have victory. Help them not to walk around a defeated person, to walk around discouraged and despondent, but let them see, Lord, we can have victory in Jesus, that we can walk in victory, even though sin is abounding, even though anxiety and all the things, all the fears of this world are coming upon us, we can have victory because of the abundance of grace for the child of God. Help us to so walk, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, forgive me. Forgive me for the times I stumble. Forgive me for allowing anxiety and fear. Forgive me for allowing anger to come into my heart. Forgive me for these things, Lord. And help me to be that God that you've called me to be. Help me daily, help me daily to yield to you and listen to the law of the Spirit. In Christ's name I pray, amen. We love you so much. You'll never know how much we love you and appreciate you. We thank God for you. Don't forget this coming Sunday, the Lord willing, Resurrection Sunday, we're going to be celebrating. We'll be a gathering up in Moxley Cemetery at 8 o'clock uh, there to celebrate the risen Savior. Beautiful little cemetery. You can see all over the mountains. It's so beautiful up there. If you don't know how to get there, if you'll contact some of us, we'll let you know, but you just go past the church. 
the road that would go to the church and you take your next road off that forks off to the right like you're going towards the landfill and then you take your first road again to the right and go right up to the top of the hill beautiful little place now if it's raining it's not supposed to be but if it's raining we'll be gathering at the church at eight o'clock but you come be with us we always have a beautiful wonderful sunrise service and uh, uh, just looking forward to that at eight o'clock there in the cemetery and then we'll be going down to the church fellowship hall uh, we're going to have uh, plenty of biscuits I hope maybe somebody will make a little gravy. I can't eat a whole lot of it, but I would like just a little taste. But if you don't, that's all right, too. I'd be better off without it. But if you'll bring some of your homemade jams, whatever you want to eat besides biscuits, we're going to have biscuits, and we're going to have uh, sausage biscuits and the different types of biscuits, ham and steak and the different things. But we're looking for just a good, good, good time of fellowship together. If you're not able to go to the cemetery, if you'll come and at least eat with us and have fellowship and then right after that, we're going to be having our regular service. We're going to have Sunday school at 10, morning worship at 11. And after that, there's going to be plenty of candy for our kids and then for our big kids. Uh, I like candy myself. So we're going to have plenty and plenty of candy. She's done got it bought. I'm sorry to tell you that we was not able to find any Reese's peanut butter eggs. They just, they're not there to be found. I told you about shortages. <laughs> Unless she finds them between now and Sunday, they're not there, but she's got plenty of other candy. And we'll just have the greatest time together, time of fellowship, as we celebrate the risen Savior. Praise God, He is alive, and He lives forevermore. May God bless you, may He keep you, and may His hand be upon you. We love you so much.